Okay, so welcome to this video on, uh, which is the first uh, in a series of videos on integration. In this video we're going to discuss a theory of integration, the easier of the two theories of integration. Um, so basically there are two theories of integration, two rigorous theories of integration. One is called the Riemann integral, uh, which is a definition for integration, and the other is called the Beig integration. Now, the Beig integration is slightly more complicated, it's, if you like, the more grown-up version, uh, but certain functions that aren't Riemann integrable are the Beig integrable. But um, as far as physicists and engineers are concerned, every function that they will pretty much ever have to deal with um, will be both Riemann and the Beig integrable, and the values of the Riemann and the Beig integral will be the same, and they will be the values that you learn to obtain from, uh, you know, from the age of 17 when you first started learning calculus. Um, so, uh, we're going to start with the Riemann integral, which is the more intuitive, easier version, but it's less... It, when you come to more... when you come to certain functions, it can't handle them, whereas the Lebesgue integral can handle them. And I'll show you that at the end. Okay, so the basic intuition for what we're trying to do with integration is we're trying to work out areas under curves. So if we have some function here, uh, so this is f and this is x, and it's on a closed bounded interval, uh, so let's say that this is the point A and this is the point B. So uh, this is a graph of the function and we're trying to work out this area under this curve. Now in a real analysis this picture we kind of we keep this picture in the back of our mind, but we have to rigorously define what we mean here. So in the rigorous terms of real analysis, we'd write that f maps uh, this closed bounded interval, a, b, onto the real line. Uh, so that all that's saying is that to every point of this interval, a, b, you are assigning another real number. And the what you can then do is you can divide up this um, interval, this interval a, b, into chunks. So we can divide it up in any way you like. They don't all have to be the same size, you can have different ones. All we have to do is create, pick some points, basically, pick some points, and then we divide it up into these little sections. And this is called a dissection. So dissections is the first thing we need to discuss. So dissection just means to cut up. So. Um, a dissection of this interval basically means we're cutting it up into lots of little pieces. So, you write a big curly D like that, um, having, yes, big curly D like that, and it's given by A is the first point of the dissection, which we might call X0, and that's less than or equal to X1, so X1 would be this point here, which is less than or equal to X2, X2 here, uh, which is less than or equal to X3, and in this case, we've only got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six points. So it's less than or equal to x4, x4 being here, which is less than or equal to x5, which is equal to b. So that's our dissection, this x0 to x5. Um, and basically, it has it splits this interval up into lots of little um, smaller intervals. And these intervals don't need to be the same size. So you can take any dissection you want. There are a huge number of them. You can have as many points in here as you want. You don't need to have six. You can divide it up into much more points than that. But we have some dissection along this form. And then what we do is we define two things. We define the upper Riemann sum along this dissection of f. And the definition of this, so the equals with the two semicolon at the front means, by definition, is defined to be equal to uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 uh, to n. So now we're doing over a general dissection, so the last point is going to be called xn. So you're going to have n plus 1 points, including the 0 point. Uh, and you take, um, you take x i minus xi minus 1, and you multiply that by the uh, supremum um, of x is an element of the interval xi minus 1 xi, 
of f of x, and this pen is misbehaving, so I'll get another one. So what does that mean? What's the intuition behind that? Basically, what we're saying is, take each interval, you have, so if we take this interval, for example, you have a range of values ascribed to um, every point of this interval. And note, this is defined, this sum is defined for any function. It doesn't need to be continuous in the way I've drawn. So you could ascribe whatever real numbers you want to all of these points. All that we know is that you have ascribed a real number to each one. You look at all of the real numbers ascribed to every single real number in this interval here, in this closed interval, and you take the maximum of them, or because the maximum doesn't necessarily exist, or um, you take the supremum. Uh, and because we're working in the real numbers, which has the least upper bound property, we know that the supremum exists, providing, of course, it's bounded. Um, so we obviously assume that this is a bounded, is bounded. Is bounded. Um, and basically, what you do is you go for every single interval, you take the maximum point, so for this case it will be up here, you multiply that by this interval length here, so you get a rectangle, so you get the area of that rectangle if you like, and basically you do that for every single one of these intervals that you've created, you take its make its maximum, and you add them all together. And that's what's called the upper Riemann sum, because you're getting something that's bigger than the area, aren't you? You're, it's an approximation to the area, but it's bigger than the area. It's always going to be bigger than the area. Uh, so that's the upper Riemann sum for your dissection. And you can do that no matter what dissection you pick. You can also define the lower Riemann sum, which is small s dissection of f, uh, which is defined to be, hopefully you can guess, xi minus xi minus 1 times the infinum. So this time you pick the smallest or the uh, uh, the greatest lower bound if the um, minimum isn't actually an element of the set. So the intuition here is you get something smaller than the area. So you pick for here, you'd pick this and you'd add up that which will get you something smaller than this area. So for every dissection, you can work out these upper and lower Riemann sums. Right, so now we need to do a little bit of thinking here. Um, because what I want to prove to you now is that if you take any two dissections, take any two dissections, dissections, I would like to prove to prove that the upper Riemann sum over d1, let's say, of f is greater than or equal to the lower Riemann sum of d2. So no matter what dissections you pick, I want to prove that every possible lower Riemann sum you could ever come up with is less than the, an upper Riemann sum. And that's pretty obvious, because you look at this picture. The up, an upper Riemann sum is always going to be greater than this area, and a lower Riemann sum is always going to be less than the area of that thing. So that's kind of the intuition for why this is true, but we need a rigorous proof, because we can't use the picture, we can't rely on the picture. Um, we, have to, we have to work purely with the symbolic isomorphism. Okay. Um, so, um, right then. Uh, so how do we do this? Well, first we need, to, we need to discuss something called a refinement for a dissection. Refining a dissection. Refining a dissection. So what do I mean by refining a dissection? Refining a dissection means, if we go back to our picture, and I know I just said don't use the picture, but um, refining a dissection intuitively means adding more points in, taking your original dissection and then putting more points in, so making a more detailed dissection, making a more precise dissection, um, making it the little pieces more. So you're adding more points. You keep all the points you've got currently, all of these you keep, but you add in more points. You might put in a new point here. Um, and what can we prove about that? Well, what's going to happen? 
what we're going to do is we're going to divide up intervals into smaller pieces and what's going to happen the supremum or what we're going to get is we're going to basically we're going to what I want to prove about say let's say dissection bar is a refinement meant of D uh, we want to prove to prove that the upper Riemann sum over this refined dissection of F is less than or equal to the upper Riemann sum over the original dissection and we also want to prove that the lower Riemann sum over this refined dissection of F is greater than or equal to the lower Riemann sum over the original dissection of F. So that oh, so let's prove that then. Okay. Um. So. Um. Let's get this up here. Right then. Uh, so if we write out uh, what the upper Riemann sum over dissection is equal to. So let's just remind ourselves, it's equal to this sum over i is equal to 1 to n of xi minus xi minus 1 of the supremum um, of x is an element of xi minus 1 to xi of f of x. Okay, so now if we take a refined dissection, what we're going to do is we're going to split this up into more pieces and basically we're going to be taking the supremum over a smaller set so the supremum of each bit is going to go down so if I draw a picture to show you what I mean by that if we have some let's say some function like this uh, and this was our original our original interval so let's say this is x i minus 1 and this is x i if we cut it up into another piece we're going to now for this bit, this bit's supremum will remain the same. The bit that is inherited, this maximum up here, will remain the same. Uh, so you'll add up that area there. But for this bit, the supremum will now be less. So you'll add up that bit. So what you're going to be adding up adding is going to be less than uh, what you added before. Um, so basically, this is going to be therefore less than or equal to, because potentially, you know, you could have the same supremum up here. It doesn't have to be continuous after all, it could be like that, and then you wouldn't end up with something smaller. So this is less than or equal to the supremum over um, the unrefined dissection, so let's say this is the refined dissection of F. And a similar proof goes for the, um, for the, um, and I'm sorry I'm using diagrams, but it's easier to use the diagrams, the pictorial, um, you could do it, you could, um, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go through and use use your axioms of real numbers and sort of prove it that way, but it's just painful. Um, so if you took, um, so if you took the same thing and for the lower Riemann sum, so let's say this is our interval here, then you take that area, but if you split it up, you'll now get, you'll get that bit for that one, but you'll have a higher bit for here, so you're adding on more, basically. So therefore, the lower Riemann sum over a refined dissection of F is therefore um, greater than or equal to the lower Riemann sum over the unrefined dissection of F. Okay, um, so that's that. And now it's quite simple to prove that for any dissection, an upper Riemann sum is greater than a lower Riemann sum for a different dissection, uh, because all you're going to have to do is take the two dissections, d1 and d2, and form a common dissection. So basically, if I've got um, our real our, our interval here, let's say this is our interval a, b, and we dissected it up, and this is our dissection 1, and then in orange we'll have our dissection 2, our points of dissection 2, then the refined dissection is just all of the points together. All of the point you want all of the points of D1 and all of the points of D2. So basically, it's a dissection that contains both the dissection of D1 and the dissection of D2. Well, from this theorem, what do we know? We know that um, the the upper Riemann sum over this common refined dissection, which we'll call D bar um, of F, is um, that's the lower Riemann sum is less than or equal to 
the um, upper Riemann sum of d1 of f, and we also know that um, that uh, if we take the lower Riemann sum over d2 of f, then that is uh, less than or equal to the lower Riemann sum over the refined dissection of f from this over here. Now, we apply the fact that we know that the lower Riemann sum of uh, one dissection must be less than the lower Riemann sum, the upper Riemann sum of that dissection. Therefore, we can say that this is less than or equal to this, because we know this is greater than or equal to this. So we can put them in like a chain, if you like. d2 of f is less than or equal to this lower Riemann sum of this refined dissection, uh, which has to be less than or equal to the upper Riemann sum of the refined dissection, uh, because those are the same dissection, and one's the maximum, one's the minimum. Sorry, you can't see this. Uh, which then has to be less than or equal to uh, the upper Riemann sum of d1 of f by the property at the top. Uh, so we can then apply that this is less than or equal to this. Um, so that shows us that lower Riemann sums are always less than upper Riemann sums. So basically, if we have our real line here, and what we want to do is want to, for every single possible dissection you can take, I want you to plot um, the value it takes. So if we take the set, if I take uh, the set of all upper Riemann sums over every dissection of f. So I want you to do every dissection. Pick every possible dissection. And I want you to give me the value of the upper Riemann sums. Then that is some set that's here. It is bounded. It is a bounded set. It can't get bigger than a certain value because you can... It's always bounded by... If you take the dissect... Let me show you, for instance, if I've got a, b... Uh, and if it's a bounded function, if, if the function has a maximum, then it's bounded by the dissection, which is just the whole interval, and you take on that maximum value. So it's bounded by that. Uh, so it is bounded. And the, similarly, the lower Riemann sum is bounded as well. Um, so if we then take the set of all lower Riemann sums over every dissection of f, well, because I've proven that every... Um, if whatever dissection you take, the lower Riemann sum is less than the upper Riemann sum, so it's going to sit somewhere here. Now, the question is, do they touch? If they touch, if they touch like this, they, if they've got this common point, if they both touch, they might not even contain that point. This is, if this this point might be the is the infinum of this set here, and it's the supremum of this set. If that's the case, if the supremum of this set is equal to the infinum of this set, then they touch. And that point, that, if you think about it, is what we mean by the area. Um, because it's the smallest of the lower Riemann sums, and it's, uh, it's the point that's less than all these upper Riemann sums, sorry, and it's greater than all the, or equal to all of these lower Riemann sums, and that has to, is squashed, it's sandwiched, it has to be the area, because the area is going to be less than or equal to all of these, and it's going to be greater than to equal to all of these, so it's that point. So if the infinum is equal to the supremum, then that value, is, then the function firstly is said to be Riemann integrable, and that value is defined to be the integral from a to b of f of x, um, dx. So that's the definition of the Riemann integral. The infinum of this, uh, if the infinum of the all the upper Riemann sums is equal to the supremum over every single dissection of these lower Riemann sums, then the function is said to be Riemann integrable, and that value there that's sandwiched in between these two sets is said to be the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So that's the definition of the Riemann integral. In the next video, I think we're going to prove the mean value theorem, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the mean value theorem uh, to prove the fundamental theorem of calculus using the Riemann integral, and then from the fundamental theorem of calculus, we're going to divide, uh, derive uh, integration by parts, integration by substitution. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the more advanced, um, advanced theory of integration, which is the Lebesgue integral.